Budget improvement discussions with the health department. Dr. Paul, thank you for being here. I'm going to give you a chance to introduce the folks that you brought with us uh, with you in a second. But I want to just give a quick shout out to some of the council members who've joined us. We have Councilman Bill Pridemore, who is in charge of the budget process for Metro Council, and Council Member Russ Pulley. I'm going to turn this over to Talia, and Talia's going to walk us through some of the highlights of your budget, and then we'll turn it over to you. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor. Talia. Okay, the health department administers or focuses on issues related to the health and well-being of people in Nashville. Nashville, its residents and visitors. The current budget for Metro is $19 million. They have grants of $24.6 million, other funding of $444,000, and $485.99 budgeted FTEs. Their budget request for FY17 is $1,088,800, and that includes eight and a half FTEs. Dr. Paul, back to you. Thank you and good morning. good morning. Appreciate this opportunity to talk about the health department, uh, public health in Nashville, and, and our budget. Uh, joining me today, we have the finance team from left to right, Jim Diamond, Diane Harden, Peter Fontaine, and then our director of environmental health, Dr. Sammy Ariola. There's two basic areas to focus on uh, in terms of our request, uh, and those two are basically responding to the growth of Nashville um, and, the, and the growing needs for public health services, and second, focusing on children's health and well-being, which is one of the foundational goals and, and really supports the key goal of, of Nashville and of, your, of you, Mayor, of, of uh, supporting education of our children. In terms of the growth of Nashville, there's a couple requests that are pretty straightforward. You know, the, the number of restaurants is increasing. The number of inspectors to inspect those restaurants uh, needs, needs to increase. And so we're proposing an increase there uh, for restaurants and for public facility inspectors, and those increases would basically be offset by the revenue from the license fees. So, Dr. Bolt, talk, talk about that, because I know that we've got codes inspectors, we've got beer inspectors, we've got food inspectors. How can all of that be more connected? How can all of that be connected? Some of them are really quite separate, and okay. you know, one of the one of the things that we can do. I mean, what we do for food, um, food safety as a public health entity, is um, is done really as a delegate of the state health department. So this is under contract with the state health department. In so many, they contract with you guys to do yeah, this. Yeah. So they is this a funded mandate or an unfunded mandate? Well, it is funded. It's a little bit complicated because the revenue, I think, goes into the general fund and then... At the state? And, well, it, to, it, to our it general comes, fund. It comes okay. to our general, our general fund, and so then it, it appears as local uh, local funding of those positions. I see. The, um, but the parameters of what we need to do are, are, are set by the contract with the state. Okay. Um, so, so are these, these increases something the state is to keep with our contract with the state, or is it something you've identified? As it it's something we've identified in terms of our ability to keep up. Um, one of the things that the state is offering us, we've always had a little difficulty with computer system at the state, uh, that they, they enter all of our information, and, um, and, and they keep a little bit of the, of the revenue. They've offered us the opportunity to, to enter that information ourselves, and, and therefore we would have more control of both the data and of the, and, and, and of the, re, of the revenue. So the, within is there this, a cost savings for us on this? It is increased revenue for us, correct. Got it, okay. Um, one of the things we can bring together, we, we inspect, within our health department, we've separately inspected hotels and hotel pools and hotel restaurants. Uh, and so what we're moving towards is uh, public health inspectors that can, that can do everything that public health needs to do, rather than have two different offices within the, within the health department involved in, in, uh, in separate inspections. Of what facilities. has to happen to make that possible? Well, Dr. Ariel is working on a plan for that. Yeah, sorry, you got to have the mic. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We um, traditionally have done those things separately, inspecting um, restaurants in hotels and going to the hotels to do public facilities inspection. The things that need to happen is we have to have the right structure in place. We obviously don't have enough staff to do all those things. And we think part of the adjustment is matching uh, those two programs will be very helpful there. We need to train our 
our staff, the guys that are doing public facilities have to be trained to do food inspection and vice versa, and just do some uh, organizational changes there. But we think we can get that done in the next few years. So how, how long do you think that training needs to take in order to get those people kind of cross-trained so that if I go to the Omni to pick, you know, check the pool, I can also walk in and check a restaurant? Yes, we think it would take a couple of years. Uh, so there's, there's a training piece to it. There's also an experience piece to it. There's an art to those inspections that takes a few years to master. Now, first of all, we have to uh, do, an, uh, there's going to be an overlap of uh, training. So experienced food inspector will be matched with uh, public facility inspector. And so part of the structure that we are putting in place is have like lead environmentalist that will be over about three to five junior environmentalists and ensure that the inspections are done well. And it's not just doing the inspection, it's doing, it's doing them well to, make, to ensure that the uh, food that people are eating here are, are safe. And, and so then the, the, the request, Dr. Paul, for food inspection and public health inspection, how many FTEs will that create? It, it will create uh, four, four FTEs, yes. So the, so the ask for this part of your budget for one and two is four FTEs. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. And we do think that the four is, we think the, the margin, the program will kind of offset the additional need for. Okay, okay great. Th thank you. One additional ask in that category of Nashville's growth is we're growing bigger, but we're not necessarily growing healthier. And we know that as a health department, we don't actually, uh, we can't do it alone. We can't make Nashville move from 13th healthiest in the state to top in the state uh, by ourselves. And so this requires planning and coordination across different agencies. Like a lot of the planning that we're doing for the for the PIP, we're asking for one public health planner, which is a person to to work on that collaborative planning with with hospitals, with healthcare agencies, with nonprofits, and and, and with the community to to uh, advance a community health improvement plan. That's the number ten, your community health planner. Correct. Um, and, and, let, and let's talk about that for a second. So you're right. I mean, all, all the statistics I see about Nashville and our our overall health, we rank really low. So what are some of the best practices that other cities are doing that would help us move that needle? Well, I think one thing is that convening. I mean, the kind of thing that you're really promoting with this PIP process is, is getting people together, getting people to, to try to align their work so that it's not everybody going off in a different direction, that, that we actually can agree on and move towards uh, shared goals in the realm of health. And we already have that going with the Healthy Nashville process, the Community Health Improvement Plan, working with the hospitals. Um, um, additionally, within government, we have we've started and we've got a ways to go with this. But the but the notion that pretty much in any department, uh, decisions and policies can affect the long range health of our of our citizens, and so the notion of health in all policies is something that that uh, that we've been carrying forward from the last administration and meeting with department heads, trying to to identify areas where we can collaborate across departments to make Nashville a healthier place. So those are two ideas and obviously it's going to be a, a, a large and a long-term thing. Talk to me about the biggest uh, ask that you got, which is the $400,000 ask that has to do with the uh, vital records. Why Why now? What, what, what is this? Oh, okay. Well, that's that's actually a little bit more of a record-keeping thing. This, the, uh, the, this is one of those things where the state um, sets the fee for vital records. Um, and so just, just at the beginning of the fiscal year, they increased the fee. And so that means that we need to send uh, money to the state for the birth and death certificates, but we didn't actually appropriate that money. So, so we're charging a higher fee, we're sending the money to the state, and, and what we're trying to do is appropriate the money so that we can send it to the state. Am I second? Did I say that correctly? We're receiving more revenue back from these. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's, revenue it's, a, it's revenue neutral. Yeah, okay, revenue. right. But That's we owe the state 400,000 bucks. Pardon me? We owe the state on this, the 400000 that, That'll be the difference. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have, we have gone ahead and paid that, but other things have you know, uh, from, drawn from other, uh, you know, okay. squeezed the budget to, to pay for that okay. this last year. But, it, but it's basically a revenue neutral ask. Even with the additional, because you want FTE to do this as well, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. 
So that's taking into consideration the FTE is still budget neutral. Yes. Can I just amend my opening statement? It may be uh, helpful to the discussion. Dr. Paul has a million dollars, 88800 in budget requests, but he is also showing a revenue offset for that million dollars, 716800 Okay, thank you. So there are outside resources that, are coming, that will be coming from other sources to fund those requests. Right. Thanks. Okay. Any additional questions? Do I have a minute to talk about children's health? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, the, and these are uh, three, uh, I mean, we do a lot of different things in, in, in children's health. It's a big piece of what we do with, with school nurses, with WIC. Um, one thing we're asking for is, is, is simply a float nurse. And this is somebody who can cover absences and vacations uh, within our three public health clinical sites uh, so, that, so that we have more uptime and so our customers aren't waiting uh, as much. What is the average wait time at the moment? You know, uh, it varies, and I don't, I don't have a good number for you right now. Uh, but I think what, what, what really hurts is uh, if we're short-staffed in a clinic, and then just managing through the day, through through lunch breaks, and that sort of thing. It, it, um, it is a squeeze. A float nurse could cover multiple different kinds of clinics. Most of them, most of them serving children. The, uh, the, the next one is a part-time audiologist. When we built our new building, we were in a different, uh, we were in a, in a program with the state where audiology services were part of it, and then the state changed the design of the program so that they, were, they no longer funded an audiologist to, uh, to provide those services. Um, most of those services are being provided at, a, at, at Vanderbilt. What number is that? Is this is number, is this, it's in here, right? Children's Special Services, and it's number... Number eight, thank you. Number nine. Is that number nine. Is it number nine? Oh, yeah, it's eight. It's eight. 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 Sorry. Nine um, so we have a audiology booth. We have families coming to us saying that uh, when they when they call for an appointment where they're supposed to go, there's a two month wait, and we have children who need to go to school. And so we would like to pilot uh, the, the 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 audiology services on site at Lens to per, to fill a gap in the community. Uh, and that's a ten thousand dollar request. So are you? Is that just a contract? So you're not. It's a part time person. Part time person. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, that's the revenue offset. Thank you. Thanks. It seemed low. <laughs> More than ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. It's fifty nine. I, I, okay. I, I, I was the revenue. I was yeah. I'm still drinking my coffee, waking up. Okay. Can, can I just ask a general yes. question? Uh, do you track statistics on children served and whether or not, do you know what the gaps are in services if we were to ask you to provide that uh, for particular services? Right. I, for audiology, it may be a little bit difficult, but, but we could try to get you more specific numbers on that. What I, what I right now have is, is that the wait time at the place where they're supposed to go is about two months. I'm just wondering yeah. how much that would move the nation. Yeah, or yeah, address really or address what gap ever ex existed. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, so we'll we'll try to get that. Right. Um. And then there's also a request for the behavioral health adverse childhood experience position. Yes. FTE there. Yes. Talk to me about that a little bit. So. Uh, Everyone is uh, becoming much more attuned to the impact of ACEs on yep. both child, child development, education, uh, mental health, long-term health, quality of life, and length of life. If you have a four or five ACEs, your your life is shortened by um, by by ten years or more. So there been, there's been a lot of community conversation about this. There's uh, there is I think an opportunity to to, to kind of to create work plans across organizations. Some of this is training for staff so that they they know how to respond in a situation of, uh, of adverse childhood events. Um, some of it has to do with people on the far side. They're, they're adults and they were affected by adverse childhood events and we have to change how we approach them with behavioral health services and with behavioral health care. This actually became part of our behavioral health kit that we'll talk about later this morning. The same concept, basically somebody, somebody who's kind of the the, um, the who is coordinating work plans across organizations, doing training. How, how does this interface with um, Judge Callaway? Because Judge Callaway has also been before me asking and talking.
talking about mm -hmm. this. Have you guys talked about that? Is that we've had a brief conversation? But, okay, because she also I think wants some funding for the similar mm -hmm. positions. So okay. it'd be nice to know how any of this would all talk to each other because yes, yeah, I clearly. mean the. the the uh, convened coalition ACE Nashville, we're all yep. participating in that. And okay. I think that there will be more, than, there is more than enough work to go around, but, but we'll definitely need to okay. touch base with Judge Calloway and make sure that we're not asking. Well, and what's the, the name thing. of the group? ACE Nashville. ACE Nashville. Um, Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any additional questions? The, um, the final thing in the realm of children's health is a capital request, and, and, it's not, and it, we've talked about it before, is, is the, uh, the current site in southeastern Davidson County. Right now we're at, at the Woodbine School, which is 87 years old. Um, and we've looked, we've done, done some looking at where our customers are coming from, and, and we really believe that, that, that we need to think about a new site. We can think about co-locating with other services that develop children, whether it's literacy, um, Head Start, those kinds of things. Um, what was, wasn't there a slide yesterday about all the requests for Southeast Nashville? Yes. I think you were on it. We were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were flagged. So. That's good. Okay. Good. Anything else from any of you all? Rich? I think the rest of your questions are, are primarily um, pretty general in nature. Anything you want to highlight on any of the other budget improvement requests that you've made? I think a lot of those are, are sort of um, just account. If, if, if doing business kind of thing. I agree. I, just thought, I agree with that. I was just wondering if there's anything you wanted to highlight. The price of flu shots has gone up. We're asking for a little more money for flu shots. We got it. Those, those kind of things. I don't, I don't think there was anything else that I felt the need to discuss. Great. Thank appreciate you. you. Thank you all for appreciate coming down. It. We appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, Michael.